We had a fourth magnet in the green tape position. Lo and behold, they're all out. It gets even better. Now we get beautiful synchronous locking. I was worried the fourth magnet might not do it. Look at that beautiful clockwise synchronous locking at 3 hertz of UVWA power. UVW, UVW. So this rotor is now totally balanced. Let's go a little faster. Look at that. We can't really invent better synchronous starting than that. Once again with all four magnets with the end poles pointing out. We don't get any of that jagged roughness. It's a beautiful motor. We've got six coils on the outside, four magnets on the inside, making a beautiful self-starting synchronous motor. No need for induction. Look at that. Six and four, three-phase power. It spins like a charm. We're going to have a little bit more fun. You should recall with these six wire coils wired up UVW, UVW, our most tightly locked arrangement and smooth turning was N, 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 four magnets arranged in a 90 degree orientation. And when you put on the UVW power, it locks clockwise. So very good. Now, what happens if we change two of the magnets to S? If we change one magnet to S, it made a mess. What happens if we change two? This is clockwise. Okay, now if we change it to NSNS, change the central two magnets, these two point out, and now if these two point in rather than out, with them when they're out it went clockwise, and now with them both pointing in, the opposite direction it goes anti-clockwise. So we can control very easily four magnets spinning inside of six wire coils, three phase power, power. UVW, UVW, NNN is clockwise, NSNS is anti-clockwise. We can spin it whichever way you want. Very, very nice and easy. And it spins beautifully, and we made a nice, beautiful, synchronous motor, and there's no issues at all. Stepper motors use something like this. I have to find out what they've been doing. Six and four, three-phase power, UVW, UVW. Six coils, four magnets, NNSS for anti-clockwise or NNNN for clockwise. I don't know the theory. I'll figure it out later. show you how strongly this NSN configuration slides. I put on 4 hertz and I'm going to have to hold on to it. It's like holding onto a tiger. It pulls you and slides right off the table. Now watch this NSN at 4 hertz. I'm holding it back. I can't stop it. It's talking that way. And that finally it shoots loose off the table. Hard to synchronize a permanent magnet motor to get it started at the very beginning. What I've done here is I've made six wire coils and put them in a tight circle and I put a little magnetic rotor with two cubes on it. And I've wired this thing up with standard UVW three phase power, so it'll go UVW. Now I've only put three coils. We're going to put on like one hertz of power, so it'll go very slowly. And what you can see is these magnets are trying to line up with one coil or the other, but they just waggle back and forth and can't seem to do it. Let's wire up all six coils next. Where we wire up all six coils is UVW, UVW, still less than one hertz. I just wanted to go slow. You can see these two magnets, both end facing out, are trying to line up like a compass with one of three arrangements, either that way, that way, or that way, 120 degrees apart. But they can't consistently what, decide what to do. Now we've got two magnets pointing out the two zeros. One magnet's pointing out at 120 here, U and V. And this is really quite interesting. Because 
it does give natural clockwise motion. This definitely gives torque. It's the first one I found to give torque. So we've self-started a magnetic motor for the first time. Now this is with the third magnet at 90 degrees and this is just super cool. You can't really get any cooler than this, can you? Now it spins clockwise rather than anti-clockwise. Robot time. Click, 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 click. You can just see the magnetic locking working here. That's at 2 hertz. Two balance magnets at 0 and 80. Now we've got the third magnet in at 120 degrees. And it continues the magnetic locking to turn anti-clockwise. It was clockwise at 90. Now it's gone back to anti-clockwise at 120. I'm not sure of the theory of this. We'll have to figure it out. Review briefly what we've just found because it's very significant. We've got six wire coils arranged UVW, UVW and standard three phase wiring. If we put power on them, two magnets alone are symmetric and they try to spin but they can't really get torque consistently clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we can't use this method to self-start a synchronous motor. However, if we add a third magnet, U V, 120 degrees, and that's the U, 60 degrees away from the first, now we get consistent counterclockwise or anti-clockwise torque. This is wired 0, 120, 240. There's a little more power. Consistent counterclockwise torque due to the second magnet at V, and they're all end pole out. We move the third magnet now to 90 degrees, it was at 60 before. Now we get consistent and very tight locking for clockwise torque. That's cool, isn't it? Let's turn it up a little faster. Like a robot, very tight magnetic locking. Let's go a little faster. You can't really magnetically lock any more nicely than that. That's what you call a synchronous motor. I like that. Look at that. Okay. Next, if we put a third magnet at 120 degrees on U and W, there's another one on U. Put on a couple hertz. Now we have it move anti clockwise. Self starts anti clockwise with locking, but not quite as tight as the 90 degree arrangement. And you can again spin this up quite nicely. Look at that. Now we have our extra magnet at 240 degrees. And we continue to get anti-clockwise self-starting tor torque with locking, but not quite as strong as the 90 degree case. Just will add our magnet at 270 degrees rather than 90. And turn it on. And again we see clockwise torque with very tight locking. can't really lock any tighter than that. To be complete, we'll add our final magnet at 300 degrees. We're going around the wheel that way. We'll turn a little torque and again we see anti-clockwise self-starting with not quite as much locking as the 90 degree case. That means if we go to four magnets, we've got three magnets here opposing and one on the right. 90 degree locking and that gives you this nice robot-like magnetic locking clockwise, which I find very, very cool. What happens when we add a fourth magnet? We add a fourth magnet in the green tape position. Lo and behold, they're all out. It gets even better. Now we get beautiful synchronous locking. I was worried the fourth magnet might not do it. Look at that beautiful clockwise synchronous locking at 3 hertz of UVWA power. UVW, UVW. So this rotor is now totally balanced. Let's go a little faster. Look at that, we can't really invent better synchronous starting than that. If we reverse the polarity of the fourth magnet, it'll still spin but very fitfully and the rotor just doesn't spin smoothly at all, so all the magnets have to be in out. And now it's spinning anti-clockwise with the fourth magnet reversed. Once again with all four magnets with the end poles pointing out. We don't get any of that jagged roughness. 
It's a beautiful motor. We've got six coils on the outside, four magnets on the inside, and making a beautiful self-starting synchronous motor. No need for induction. Look at that. Six and four, three-phase power. It spins like a charm. Next we're going to have four magnets, two magnets arranged at, at U and U, and two magnets arranged 60 degrees away from U and U, not 90 degrees away. You remember the 90 degrees went clockwise, and now when you turn this on, they synchronize and lock very nicely anti-clockwise. Look at that. Beautifully balanced. So we can make it go clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on the angle between the two different sets of magnets. Now if that isn't cool, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be thorough, we're going to put the two extra magnets in a different 60 degree position. Previously where the white tape were, they went anti-clockwise with nice locking. And now we put them in the other position, across diagonally from that. And now they again go anti-clockwise. Turn up a little faster. With nice locking. But it's stalling. For better, I don't know which is better. The 90 degree arrangement seems better. But this is interesting anyway. We're just studying it for the first time. Thank you very much. We're going to have a little bit more fun. You should recall with these six wire coils wired up UVW, UVW, our most tightly locked arrangement and smooth turning was N, 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 four magnets arranged in a 90 degree orientation. And when you put on the UVW power, it locks clockwise. So very good. Now, what happens if we change two of the magnets to S? If we change one magnet to S, it made a mess. What happens if we change two? This is clockwise. Okay, now if we change it to NSNS, change the central two magnets, these two point out, and now if these two point in rather than out, with them when they're out it went clockwise, and now with them both pointing in, the opposite direction it goes anti-clockwise. So we can control very easily four magnets spinning inside of six wire coils, three phase power, power. UVW, UVW, NNN is clockwise, NSNS is anti-clockwise. We can spin it whichever way you want. Very, very nice and easy. And it spins beautifully, and we made a nice, beautiful, synchronous motor, and there's no issues at all. Stepper motors use something like this. I have to find out what they've been doing. Six and four, three-phase power, UVW, UVW. Six coils, four magnets, NNSS for anti-clockwise or NNNN for clockwise. I don't know the theory. I'll figure it out later. If we put six magnets, they just rattle because the UVW phases are all out of phase and there's no torque with six all pointing outward. Likewise, with three magnets, there's no consistent torque. It just rattles. Four was the magic number. Otherwise, if we put five magnets arranged equally, it just rattles. You have to use four. You can't use five or six or three or two. Now I'm going to try to describe how this unusual three-phase motor works with six coils and four magnets that self-starts beautifully as a synchronous motor. No one's seen it before. I haven't seen any other examples in the literature that would describe it. Here's your three-phase power. Now at time zero, your one magnet is going to be sitting here on the U-coil, north attract. And There'll be another magnet sitting here, halfway between the V and the W coils, here, 90 degrees away from the first magnet. And V is 120, W is 240. And at this point, time zero, there's no difference in magnetism between them. But as you go forward in time just a little bit, V's are going to become more north-like, 
so naturally be attracted to the magnet sitting on you, W is going to become more south-like, a changing magnetic field. So over a short period of time, just after this lock, the N magnet is going to want to repel more from W than from V. So naturally it will go back toward V in a clockwise torque. So we have a magnet here that holds the rotor in place, another one 90 degrees away, halfway between V and W, and it gives a torque between W and V. because Not because the fields are the same here, because they change quite afterwards. V is not going to be, it'll go toward V and away from W. Now I've never heard that principle described anywhere in physics before. The end magnet moves from W to V as it holds on to U. We have a holding magnet and a torque magnet, 90 degrees away from one another. And then we have two of them, so they're four on the rotor. I've never heard that in physics before, and it spins beautifully. It's a synchronous permanent magnet motor that starts by itself. You can spin it clockwise, anti-clockwise. Maybe it's new. If it's new, it'll be very valuable. We'll have to study it further. Thank you very much for your kind interest and help.